Here we are. I think this really is the last video in chapter one on vectors. I'm going to add one more detail to this example of the random walker, which is no longer called a walker. I'm now calling it a mover. Um, and if, where I last left off with this example is every time I click the mouse, the mover picks a new random velocity that can be seen here in the constructor, p5.vector.random2d. Now you know that's a static function because I made a whole video about that. And then that velocity, every frame is added to the position and the mover is drawn as an ellipse at that position. So I want to add one more concept to this video and that is the concept of acceleration. Acceleration will act as the building block for all of the examples I'm going to show you in chapter two. Because of Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. So acceleration plays a key role in any kind of physics engine or physics simulation. But right now we're not gonna worry about the sort of physics aspect of this and just add the idea of acceleration. Our mover object currently has a position and a velocity. And we've established that the position is a vector that describes relative to the origin where that, ve where that object is in two-dimensional space. The velocity describes how the position changes over time. So on a frame-by-frame -frame animation, a, the position is here, then the velocity is added to the position, and its new position is here. And if its velocity remains constant, it would keep just moving like this. Its velocity would be applied, applied, applied. However, acceleration can be described as the change in velocity over time. So if this object, this mover were to accelerate, maybe you in the, the sort of typical way you might think about that, acceleration is it's getting faster. So we could imagine it that way, right? First its velocity is this, then it's like this, then it's like this. So it's accelerating and moving larger, larger steps each frame. But acceleration just means the change in velocity. And remember velocity is a vector. So that could mean it's changing its direction or its magnitude. It could be slowing down, that's an acceleration, speeding up, turning, all of those combined together, that's an acceleration. It's just another vector. And it goes into our, what I'm calling the motion 101 algorithm. And that motion 101 algorithm can be found right here in the update function. Add the velocity to the position, this.position.addVelocity, and right before that, this.velocity, add this.acceleration. So now, there we go. Well, why isn't it accelerating? It's not accelerating, it's not changing its magnitude or direction because the acceleration is zero. So let's give it something. Let's also give it a random vector. Woo. So now you can see that it's kind of speeding up. Now the acceleration here is constant and it's, it's almost as if there's this like big fan right in the center that's just pointing in a direction and sort of blows the mover off in a direction. You can see that it turns ever so slightly. This is most likely because whatever velocity it picks is not the same direction as acceleration. To demonstrate what's happening here a bit more clearly, I might do something like set the magnitude of the acceleration to something much smaller. So I'm still picking a random unit vector in some direction, but then setting the magnitude to 0 .0, 0 0.01. And you can see now it's kind of turning around. And I, and I could also go back to putting the background in setup that might help us sort of see the path that it's taking. And we got, here we got a kind of an acceleration in a different direction from the initial velocity. I could also reset the acceleration to something random every time an update. Let me take this and put it here, take this off, run it again. So this is something kind of resembling that original random walk, but the acceleration is cumulative. It's accumulating into the velocity. So if it's picking it in the same direction randomly a few times in a row, it's gonna build up enough sort of speed and sort of fly off in that direction. Now there is another useful vector function that I haven't mentioned to you that's kind of similar to the normalized function that I could use here, and it's the limit function. What limit does is take any vector and cap its magnitude at a certain amount. So if I say limit five, and this vector has a magnitude of 15, it will take that vector and shrink it down, set its magnitude to five. 
The difference between limit and say set magnitude or normalize is if it's less than five, it's not going to raise it up to five. It's going to leave it at say two. So back in the code, what I can say is, ah, any after I apply the acceleration, let's make sure the velocity doesn't get too large. And I can say limit, I don't know, I'm just going to say limit it to two. So it's a pretty strict limit there. And then if I run the sketch, what this, this is now really looking much more like that random walk before, but I am using the concepts of acceleration and velocity. And so now, this would allow me to do a lot more stuff with a random walk. And that's going to come as I get to more stuff and more and more of these examples in chapter two. Um, but ultimately, what I want to show you here is what happens when I calculate a very specific acceleration, like one that points towards the mouse location. Still, I might say, like, you could pause the video here and try all sorts of other algorithms for calculating acceleration. What if you used Perlin noise for the acceleration? Or what if you had the acceleration based on some vector that's based on some, uh, some other type of data that's coming into your system? But for this particular example, I can return to everything that I did in the previous video, which is I have the position, I have the mouse, and now I just want to do that same exact math operation, mouse minus position, set the magnitude to something fixed, and apply that as the acceleration. Let's see what happens. I'm going to start by creating a vector at the mouse location. Then I'm going to set the acceleration to the, the result of subtracting the mouse minus this object's position. Then I'm going to set the magnitude of that to 0 0.1. And I'm picking that arbitrarily. Now I have a three-step process. Calculate the acceleration, apply the acceleration to the velocity, limit the velocity, then apply the velocity to the position. Let's take out the limit just for right now. Maybe we don't need it. Amazingly, we get this result that's something like an elliptical orbit. You would think the object would just be going straight towards the mouse. So if this is the mouse right here, and this is the object, and it's going in this direction, basically, I'm taking this and applying it as the acceleration. So if I take this acceleration vector and apply it to the velocity, velocity plus acceleration equals the new velocity, which is this. And then add, so then it's over here. Then this is the vector I add to it. So we take this velocity add acceleration, and now this is the new velocity. See how I'm ending up in this path. Now, depending on the relative strength of the acceleration, then I might be sucked into like where I'm the, these, what I'm being attracted to much more quickly, or I might spiral around it. And we can experiment with that as a variable. So for example, what if I said, instead of 0.1, set magnitude to 5? Well, you can see now it's really going out of control. So maybe this is where I want to limit the velocity. And you can see now I've done that, it can't move very fast, but it's going to really, that, that acceleration is super strong. It's going to like move right to it. And in fact, it's actually going to stop at it because it, you know, if it gets past it, it's going to tell it to slow down and go back in the other direction. And maybe I want to limit this and set this here. You know, there's so many different ways. I don't know what I'm trying to do here, but you can see I can get very different kinds of qualities of how this object follows the mouse based on this model by playing with what the velocity's limit is and what the strength of the acceleration is as well. Now, how I actually calculate the acceleration and how I think about this particular mover object in a world that a lot of different things could affect its acceleration, that's really where I'm going. And that's really the model of forces. So there's really this idea of a force, right? There's this force that's pulling the object towards the mouse. But what if there were other forces? What if there's forces that are coming from the walls of the canvas, so to speak, the edges? What if there was just like this wind force or gravity or other types of things, friction force? So this is where I'm going in chapter two. Um, I am going to calculate a variety of different force vectors and put them all into the object's acceleration. But now you have something you could really play with as an exercise. Can you create a simulation with an object moving around the canvas 
that all of its motion emanates from its acceleration. What are other ways you could calculate the acceleration to create some type of dynamic motion? And so this wraps up this section on vectors. I'm sure I missed so many things about vectors and there's many more math, oper op math operations with vectors and other things to think about and consider. And hopefully I'll continue to touch on those as I go on and on to more and more examples. Um, if you make something, share it with me at thecodingtrade.com in the comments here. If you have questions, you can also ask them. You can join the Discord to ask your questions there. And I will be back in section two to talk about Newton's laws of motion and forces. <laughs>